Most people, when they go for their holidays in Spain, go south, but me, I'm going north for the fiesta season. Up there, they say that water is for washing, not for drinking, so I reckon that I'm in for a really wild time. Spain is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world, with over 60 million visitors coming here each year. From Barcelona, I travel in the Basque country to the cities of Pamplona and San Sebastian. Then it's along the north coast before heading south to the capital, Madrid. Then northwest, where I pick up the pilgrim trail at Rabanal, which takes me to Santiago, and finally the Atlantic coast. Square. Excuse me. Hi, do you speak any English? Yeah. You do. Do you know any like decent hotels around here I can stay? Not yeah. too much money. You the know? cheap one, you mean? Yeah. 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 Of course. Um, you see, you see there. Uh huh. There is on the corner. You can, you you can go there. The number left. You 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 can't miss it. There is a function that. Barcelona has an international reputation for its style, art and architecture, so it gets a lot of visitors and it's quite easy to find a good place to stay. Hola, hola. Do you have any rooms? Do you want a double or single? I think I'll go for double. Okay. Don't forget the key. Okay, thank you. Well, it's pretty nice. 4,500 pesetas, about $20. I think it's all right. Spanish really like these little baths, just can't work out why. But the best thing about this room is this. It's really great. It gets very noisy at night though, so if you're a light sleeper, it might be better to get a room at the back. The fascist era ended in 1975, thousands of immigrants settled in Barcelona. It's the capital of the Catalan region, which has its own language. Its character and history is reflected in Gaudi's modernista architecture. This is the Sagrada Familia, which is Gaudi's biggest monument, but unfortunately one that he didn't finish. He dedicated his life so much to it that when he died, he looked like a tramp and no one recognised him. Since then, the controversy has been how to finish this building, if at all. fountain in Barcelona. I really needed that. Spain is famous for its street life. Flamenco has its roots in the gypsies of Andalusia in the south. It's rarer to come across it in northern Spain. Terrassa is a small town 20 minutes from Barcelona. In July, they celebrate the Fiesta de Castells, which involves the tradition of building human castles. Why do you do it? Well, because it's a Catalan tradition, and we are very proud to be Catalan. And because our group is like a big family, you know what I mean? A lot of different kind of people, and for us, that's it's very important. The 
Castell used to be a folk dance and the castles evolved from there. Men and women of all ages take part and they have to train all year round. to get around Spain. They're cheap and efficient and more reliable than trains. This is my bus to Pamplona. It's going to take five and a half hours to get there, but luckily there's a loo on board. I'm heading to Pamplona for the famous running of the bulls, and from there I travel to San Sebastian on the north coast. Pamplona is in the Navarra, part of the Basque country, and during the fiesta in midsummer, it gets overrun with visitors. During the fiestas, people, you're so close. Yeah. And being in Pamplona, we had, you know, 100 people surrounding you so tight in a, one corner. You don't want a hip sack on you, you don't want a bag on you. I even had a money pouch, a security pouch. I left it at the room. I just had some money in my passport, and it was all in my sock. On the 6th of July, all hell breaks loose for the first day of the bull run, known as El Enciero. This place is absolutely buzzing, and everybody, but everybody, is wearing red and white, which is obviously the festival colours, apart from me. So I've got to get my act together, but first, I've got to find somewhere to stay. Hotels are booked out. You can try looking in the local paper because uh, families advertise for rooms sometimes in here. Fingers crossed. Si. Hola, habitaciones, por favor. Si, suba. Hola. Lo siento. Full. Full. Okay. Thanks. Anyway. Adios. Adios. Well, that's that then. Park is my last option. Taconera Park, near the city's cathedral, is a popular place for travellers to bed down. Well, you know, I've looked around Pamplona and it's just solid, you know, yeah. it's no nothing. And yeah. somebody are you said by maybe. Yourself? Yeah, I am. Do you want to like, hang out with us for the day? Yeah. That'd be really kind, actually. Hi, Hi Shilpa. 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 We'll call you Sangria. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We've got dinner on if you want to have some dinner. Have you eaten? Dinner, fantastic. We've got enough, have we? Yeah. Uh, we'll have to make do. But... So I'll do the washing up in the morning. In the morning? Uh, Where am I sleeping? Out here? <laughs> Where are you? In the morning. In the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you sleeping? Yeah. Out here? Watch your head. Take it easy now, fellas. Good night, Sangria. Good night, Sangria. So my new nickname is Sangria. Well, I slept pretty well last night, except for everyone that was walking past, fiestering all night, talking, blah, blah, blah. That was a bit tiring, but um, today I think I'm going to give it a go, running with the bulls. The race starts to bad eight, so I've got to get a move on. So, Charles, what do you do? Well, I raise cattle and horses southwest of Wichita, Kansas, on the southern plains. So, what, bulls is your business? Yes. Yeah. yeah we raise a lot of rodeo stock, rust stock. Yeah. So I just come over here to run these bulls. What do you have to do? Because I'm going to try. The other people are more dangerous than the bulls, actually. It's just a, a very tough situation. You're going to run over people falling on the ground. There's going to be people laying up the street. You're going to have to be watching for bulls all the time, other people running over you all the time. You've got, to, you've got to keep your space and run like hell. And um, is it dangerous? Yes, it's yes. dangerous. It's dangerous. Uh, two years ago, one guy was killed. It happened because the guy fell to the floor, and he tried to get up, and then it was when the bull uh, hit him in the heart. He was killed. Yes. So, what's your advice then for me when I run? Okay, just run. Just run. <laughs> but don't forget the bulls.
seen as a test of skill and bravado to run alongside the bulls, but there have been several deaths, and each year hundreds are injured. These people here, they are Spanish, so they won't like, they won't like me saying this. It's cruel on bulls, it is, yeah, fairness, it is. And this is the one time of the year bulls get their own back when they run people down the street. I decided not to run the bull race in the end because it is just too mad out there. There's too many drunk guys, too much pushing and shoving. You know, the bulls are dangerous, but the guys are even more dangerous, so I gave it a miss. By contrast, the stone lifting contest seems quite tame. Stone lifting is a very important sport in the Basque country. The men are like this, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They are very romantic people. How so uh, romantic? Romantic, I mean, they love the stones and this. For example, I love beautiful girls, but they, they love the stone. So they clean the stone and they... They tend and care yeah, for the stones. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing. Right, 100 yeah. kilos, I'm yeah. just going to lift up. Yeah. Yeah. So, go down. Oh, all I'm actually doing is just leaning over. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm going to lift it. Look, watch, watch, you better get Go, 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 go. 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 Let's go. I'm giving birth. Go, go, go. I got it! I got it! Oh. <laughs> like, when you get to full speed, you take it out of gear. And once it's out of gear, you go a lot faster because you get. We've actually got this up to 110, because we're a bit shaky though. Hundreds of Australians travel around northern Spain, and if you're heading to San Sebastian, you should be able to hitch a lift in a combi van. Don't say that, now it's going to die. <laughs> But you going around Europe, well, I that's do. what you remember, it's like trucks breaking down and this and that. Well, I do because I was stuck in London trying to get the van fixed when the, while these guys were away. So, I'm holding the grudge. He's holding it. So, do you have to do all the work? Yeah. You do? Well, it's just you and me. I'm yeah. the only one that does anything. Oh. <laughs> so, we're just outside San Sebastian, aren't we, Tony? That's right. And right here is the Cedaria, which is the place where they make which is a speciality in the Basque region. We're going to see some action today. <laughs> Forming a half moon around the Bay of La Concha, San Sebastian is a beautiful seaside resort and the capital of the Basque province. So they're playing a pelota, which is the Basque national game. It's a bit like squash, so you use your hands and there's four people that play it. San Sebastian is also a good place to sample other aspects of Basque culture, such as its extra delicious tapas known as pinchos. Hola. Hola, Vanessa. Can I have some pinchos, please? Yeah? Well, how does it work here? I, I'll show you. We want. Uh, yeah, we want something nice. to drink. 
Yeah, <laughs> the wine would be nice. Um, Thank you. Know. Yeah, what is this pinchos thing? Uh, How do you do it? Pinchos is a kind of socializing here in the past country. If you want to have a lunch, or you want something before having lunch, you come here to those bars and you ask for here. You ask, you pick up some pinchos. What's this one? That is. Uh, it's a baby eel inside, uh -huh. you see? Mm -hmm. Here? And salmon around, yes. okay? Mm. I put it here, I'm gonna try. You try some. Bit. I think I'll go for some of this, which looks like a. Mm. How is that? Nice? That is red pepper. And salmon. Salmon. Mm. Okay. That looks good. Don't worry, for the wine. Oh, it. I can't leave my glass of wine behind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How is it different to tapas? In the Basque country, we have um, a lot of competitions between uh, among the different chefs, okay? Mm -hmm. And they prepare a new tapas and new pinchos every hour, every two hours. But how is it different to other tapas in Spain? Because of the freshness. Although I think that it's not the best bar, we could go to other places. Yeah? The best pinchos in San Sebastián. The Basque region stretches from France all along the coast of northern Spain and includes a mountainous region around the Somiedo National Reserve. Somiedo Park is Spanish cowboy country, but they're more like shepherds than Texas rangers. It's a shame, really, because um, you're a dying breed now. Most of the young are going into the cities and there's supposed to be wild bears around here. Hope I don't bump into any. Off I go. Although Spain has a population of over 40 million, much of northern Spain is mountainous, with vast tracts of wilderness that are sparsely populated and offer lots of great trekking possibilities. Whether on foot, horseback or mountain bike, there's plenty of trails to explore. Trekking routes are available in nearby towns. So local farmer said I could stay here. It's called a tater, and this is where the shepherds come in the winter with their animals, but they don't live here anymore. Tonight I'm going to be really warm because this stone is sealed with cow dung. We're a bit like, we too, we're a bit like Japanese taking pictures all the time. <laughs> The cities here are so beautiful and the sky blue and, and the clouds, it's, it's perfect for taking pictures. The next leg of my journey takes me from the north coast into the centre of the country to the Spanish capital, Madrid. Madrid isn't one of Spain's most beautiful cities. It's modern with many sprawling suburbs, but it does have great art museums, plazas and palaces. This flea market in Madrid, the Rastro, is the biggest in Europe. Good place to get lost in. Around here is where a lot of gypsy people have their stores, and if you spot a guy dressed all in black, he's the head honcho of the whole clan. In Spain, you can still pick up fascist memorabilia from the Civil War. 
from stores like this. Ponte Cuesta? That's about five dollars, but not for me. Thanks. I'm in the Reina Sofia, which is the modern art museum in Madrid. They've got everything here, Picasso's, Nero's, and even some Dali's. When Franco ordered the small Basque town of Guernica to be totally destroyed in the Spanish Civil War, Picasso was so outraged he painted this painting, Guernica, as a protest against war. Even though this is the capital city of Spain, between two and six o'clock, everything just shuts down for siesta time. So you can either make alternative plans for the afternoon or just do as the Spanish do. To hire a car in Spain can be expensive. If you've got a friend to drive you around, then that's definitely the best option. From Madrid, my road trip takes me northwest through the cities of Segovia, Avia, Salamanca, and finally Zamora. Okay, you see, we are crossing now the border. We were in Madrid, and now we are in Castilla León, which is another, another region of Spain. Another region. Another, another character. Another country, another character. Yeah, province of Segovia. Uh -huh. Up there, that huge cross on the hill. Wow, that's the place where Franco is buried. You know, for 40 years, Franco was always telling us we, we had to be proud of being Spain, Spanish. Unified now, Spain. Yeah, yeah. now it, it's the other extreme. So now we are proud of being Catalan, of being from Madrid, or being from the Basque Country, but not Spanish. First stop is Segovia, best known for its spectacular aqueduct. It's a freestanding structure, there's no cement or anything that's actually holding it up. But all these cars, you know, 100 years of pollution and it's going down the drain. When Walt Disney saw this 15th century Amazon castle, he liked it so much he created it for Disneyland, but I much prefer it. This vast region, Castilla-Leon, is the old heartland of northern Spain. The people here have endured extremes of climate and poverty, and their culture is amongst the most traditional in Spain. Salamanca is one of the biggest university towns in Spain. This has got so much beautiful architecture in this town. Northern Spain has a wealth of medieval towns and cities. The university here is the oldest in Europe and popular with students from abroad who come to study Spanish. Hector, is that there's no cars here, so all the buildings stay yeah. really clean, huh? No cars here, no stress, just people, just, just stones. Out. This very beautiful color of the stones. Another 40 miles further on from Salamanca, my road trip ends in the medieval town of Zamora.
listen, Hector, I had such a good time. Yeah, me too. Do you want time? No, I'll be fine. Thanks. Okay. Thanks a so, lot. See you soon. Take care. Okay. Be good, Hector. Bye. Hola. You got any rooms? Yes, we have. May I have one passport, please? Thank you. One of the good things come out of the Franco era was that he converted these amazing monuments like castles and monasteries into four-star hotels or paradors, which are relatively cheap, around $100 a night. Pretty good, huh? Cheap, that is, if you've saved up for a special treat. Buenos dias. is good. And so is that view. From Zamora, I'm on my own once again, travelling northwest to join the famous Pilgrim Trail, which crosses northern Spain and ends in Santiago de Compostela. From there, it's on to Cabo Finisterra on the Atlantic coast. So I've got my credential, which means that I can walk along the Pilgrim route, and you can get these anywhere along the trail. I've got my staff, just like everybody else, and my scallop shell, which people used to drink out of in the olden days. And this is where I pick up the trail. Santiago is 250 kilometers that way. Wish me luck. I joined the Pilgrim Trail at Rabanal, sleeping at four refugios on my way to Santiago, Villafranca, Osobrero, Porto Marin, and Azua. The Pilgrim Trail was originally an important trade route across the north of the country. Nowadays, there's various routes stretching all the way from France and even Eastern Europe. The Apostle St. James preached the Christian faith in Spain, and by the 11th century, the Pilgrim Trail had become a religious journey, ending in Santiago, where it's thought he was buried. God, am I pleased to see that. The refugio's up here. Hello. Good day. Hello. How are you? So refugios like this are for pilgrims only and they're free. He's used just signing me in and then he's going to stamp my credential to show that I've walked this far. Thanks, it's you. I don't know, but I will say yes to it. Do you think it's funny to go on holiday and like walk for miles? Yeah, but then that's part of it. It's all right going to these countries like Greece and so on for yeah. some sunshine, but people want a little bit more. Yeah. And this is a whole lot more. Yeah. You come up the hill and it's just a tarp like magic in tent and it looks higgledy piggledy and upside down and you come in and it's wonderful. It's like a huge family living room. In the days of the Spanish Inquisition, witchcraft was big in the Galicia region, and they say it's still around today. This potion, the witch's cocktail, is a traditional brew to ward off evil spirits. It's poured from an old jar, then poured back, so that over the years this same drink has been tasted by thousands of pilgrims. Mm. At last. <clears throat> that is a profoundly alcoholic drink. This is where I'm sleeping. There's people everywhere. Come in. The most amazing thing about this place is that so many famous people have come to stay here, like St. Francis of Assisi, a saint, Prince of Spain, even Shirley MacLaine have slept in these beds. Maybe even mine. Anyway, I've got to go to sleep. If you're going to tackle the pilgrim route, aim to walk about 25 miles a day, but don't expect it to be all green hills and lush pastures. It's not all beautiful scenery, this route, I've realised, but, you know, thousands of years ago, this place must have been all fields.
At an altitude of 4,000 feet, Osobrero is a tiny wind-battered settlement of stone houses and one of the most isolated spots on the Pilgrim Trail. So I've just crossed from the region of Castilla to Galicia, where here it's much more hilly and lush. And, you know, people warn me that after a couple of hours of walking on your own, you'd get a bit detached and, and a bit lonely. And, it, and, you know, it is like that. Thousands of people walk the Pilgrim Trail every year, most of them in the summer months. For some, it's a physical challenge or a time of solitude, but for many, it has a religious purpose. So do you get a lot of blisters on your feet? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of people have you met? I've met people who are who are doing it because they need time. Yeah. And people who are doing it uh, just for sport, even. Yeah. So do you think it's changed you a bit? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's changed me a great deal. I'm telling you, I'm shattered and my feet hurt. I'm stopping here for the night. I can't believe I made it this far. Thankfully, as a pilgrim, I've got somewhere to stay at the monastery. Cheers just around the corner, I hope. If you get to Santiago in midsummer, you'll find it's fiesta time and places to stay are hard to find. Try the Seminario Menor, a boarding school for priests, which has been turned into a hostel. For about $15 a night, you can get your own hot shower. Santiago is one of Spain's most stunning cities. It's also a lively place with no shortage of cafes and bars, which specialize in tasty seafood snacks. Hola. Hola. Uh, una cerveza, por favor. Una cerveza. A hey, uh, Orella. 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 Orella de porco. Yeah, Orella. Whatever that is. Cheapest thing on the menu. Esto, esto es la oreja de cerdo, está muy rico, de esta de oreja de cerdo. This looks like that, yeah. La oreja de cerdo de este de... Está muy rico, hay que comer un poco. So it is the nose of the pig. En la astronomía de aquí de Jaldi decíamos jardín. They say the Spanish eat everything of the pig, apart from the oink. Y que no Santiago is Spanish for St. James, the patron saint of Spain, and July the 25th is the anniversary of his death. Many pilgrims coincide their walk to end with the festival. This giant incense burner inside the Santiago Cathedral was originally used in medieval days to cover up the stench of pilgrims after their mammoth hike. up to five, I think, maximum. Then you get to meet a lot of people. Yeah. And it's really exciting to see. 
In the evening, an Islamic facade covering the front of the cathedral is set on fire. It symbolizes turning the Moors out of Spain in the 15th century and victory for the Catholic faith. after reaching the festival in Santiago, some pilgrims continued west to the Atlantic coast and ended their pilgrimage here. This place is known as Cabo Finisterra, which means the end of the world, because people thought that it was. That is, until Columbus discovered America. We really didn't know what to expect from North Spain, but the culture here is so fantastic, especially as it's rooted in its medieval past. But I'll tell you something, I'm glad I did the Pilgrim Trail, because I've eaten so much good food that by now I should be the size of a bull.